Hello, my friend, and welcome to this episode of A Call to Leadership. I'm Dr. Nate Sala, your host, and I am so glad you are here on this episode of the show. We're going to talk about leadership and motivation. One of the challenges we face as leaders every day is how to effectively motivate our followers. In fact, the, the entire sphere of motivation and leadership studies has been called the holy grail of influence. And what does that mean? It means it's so difficult to understand and even attain how we can motivate others to achieve top performance, to do their very best. But it's critical in organizations. It's critical in leadership positions. And there are effective ways to motivate people. I'm going to talk about that today. So listen in, because this is an area, this is Jedi area, this is this is ninja area. This is an area for you to grow as a leader and have massive impact and massive influence in such ways that you can help others become the very best at what they do, to reach higher and further, to give them what they need, to thrive. In fact, I was just having a conversation with one of my teammates recently who was sharing the the joy and thrill of working in this environment and wanting to do the very best possible work. Now, I have to admit, friend, that hasn't always been the case. It hasn't always been uh, the situation where people are, are extremely motivated to work toward a common cause together. I've had situations where I've had gaffes and challenges and mistakes and missteps in, in how I've led. And they've caused a lot of heartache in the organizations I've, I've been a part of over the years. So I'm not perfect. However, I've been learning over these years, over these almost 30 years of being in business, over almost 30 years of being in the educational sphere and learning about effective leadership practices, being a student of the trade, a student of the discipline, simply a student. And I'm going to share that with you today. And in that conversation, you've been in a situation to where you've been an employee. Think of yourself when you were an employee. When I was working and I was young, I worked at a place called Chuck E. Cheese's. It was my very first job. And it's uh, then it turned into showbiz pizza place where I was living. I was making minimum wage, $3.35 an hour. I was 16 years old. I was just happy to be working out of the house, you got to understand, back in the 80s, there wasn't much to do at home. You couldn't hang out with your friends online. There was no online. If you wanted to have a conversation with somebody, you had to pick up the phone. And sometimes there was no way to talk because someone else was on the phone. You might call your friend and then the line was busy. What does that mean? That means that you couldn't get through. You couldn't even get to a voicemail. So you had to get out. That's why young people a long time ago, we used to have to want to drive cars because we wanted to get and meet our friends. Well, this was my first job, getting out of the house. I just wanted to work. And this was my very first exposure to the workplace outside of my family workplaces. I worked for family members in different areas. I come from a family of merchants. Everybody worked and they had their own businesses mostly. So I was constantly in that environment ever since the age of 12. By the time I was 16, I was ready to go out on my own. I had already learned a lot. But this was going to open my eyes to a whole nother level of motivation. And learn about myself too. And, and, and think about yourself as a leader today. Think about yourself when you were being led. Think about yourself when you worked for others. Now, you might have worked in a family business your entire life. You might have worked for a number of different people. Irrelevant to that, think about your own motivations. This is par, pro, probably one of the reasons why it's considered the holy grail of motivation is because we are all different people. We have different types of ways that motivate us. However, there are some overarching brushstrokes that we can look at from the motivational perspective and see what, what, what truly delivers top performance in individuals. Well, one thing that I found in myself is that I wanted and desperately wanted to be recognized. I wanted to get rewarded. I wanted to have my extra effort, my exceeding of expectations. I wanted to be appreciated. I wanted to know that I mattered. Now, someone might be saying, you know what? 
recognition programs. Uh, uh, they can lead to entitlement. They can lead uh, people expect rewards without putting in the extra effort. Well, I'm going to say that con- that concern is valid, but it can also be addressed by setting some clear criteria for for recognizing and rewarding. Because if we tie rewards to specific performance, to specific metrics, or exceptional achievements employees are more likely to understand that recognition is earned. It's not expected. It's earned through what? Accomplishments, through their hard work, if you will. And I want to use air quotes, but through their effort. In fact, an article published in the Journal of Applied Psychology found that that properly implemented recognition programs can increase employee motivation and performance. And and that's what happened with me. I first started in the kitchen. I was washing dishes and I was happy to be washing dishes, but here's what was going to happen. I set out to wash the cleanest dishes that had ever been washed in that store. My dishes were spotless. They were clean. They, I opened up my giant bin where I put all the dishes in and the, the, the steam came out and it was just a beautiful array of clean dishes. And I, and if they weren't fully cleaned, I ran them through again because I wanted my dishes to be perfect. I wanted to, my managers and my coworkers to know that I was a team player. I wanted them to know that my outstanding performance was going to lead to a better experience for everyone. And so that was that was number one. Now, did I need to get some kind of a public recognition, like um, a, a monthly award or a certificate or a monetary bonus? I don't. I didn't mind that. If if that happened, employee of the month, yes, I was striving for that. I didn't have to get it, but if I did, it was a little extra. Should you do that? Possibly, depending on the size of your organization. Uh, other ways, incentive programs, you know, you can offer a reward or a bonus tied to performance, to individual or even team performance in your organization. You can set, do sales targets, project completion goals, customer satisfaction metrics, all different types of ways to do this. However, one of the most resonant ways, you might not have a big organization, you might have a small organization, you might not have all of the different tools to complete massive, you know, you might have one employee. And you say, well, this employee is employee of the month every single month, right? That may not be be the most effective way to motivate. However, one extremely effective way, whether you have one employee, and, and this isn't just employees, by the way. This is any leadership follower relationship. It could be in a family. It could be children. It could be in an organization that, such as a charity, a nonprofit could be in a community organization. It could be a number of different things. But here's where here's one other way that doesn't require you to have a, a large staff or a large team. Personalized appreciation. Taking the time to personally acknowledge someone and appreciate their contributions with, with real recognition, with heartfelt verbal recognition, right? You can do a handwritten note. You can do public praise during a team meeting, all different ways to do this. I desired that personal appreciation. I desired that pat on the back to say, Nate, you matter. And every step of the way, that helped me uh, tremendously. And I mean tremendously with, with my, um, with my, uh, with my progress and my performance. And I'll tell you more about that soon. But not only was it important for me to be recognized, it was super important for me to be in a work environment that was positive. I can't stress enough the, the importance and the ability you have to have power over the environment as a leader. We miss this as leaders. We, we, we look at all different kinds of power mechanisms, reward power, punishment power, the power of authority, power of expertise, power of information. There's a number of different power bases. And there was an entire series on this on the show. And I'll make sure in the show notes that you have the access to those to that series on power and go back to that and listen to it. But having the, the 
authority and the ability to create a positive environment for work. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical environment, friend. It can be a virtual environment too, especially if you have remote employees. You can, you can have massive amounts of value in terms of, of motivating your people. Now, you might say, Nate, uh, too much emphasis on collaboration, teamwork. It's going to hinder that individual creativity. It's going to hinder that innovation. No, it's important to not suppress individuality or discourage uh, new ideas, but collaboration is essential to team cohesion. In fact, an MIT study conducted by researchers found that diverse teams where individuals bring unique perspectives and skills together, they're more likely to generate innovative solutions. And by creating this positive work environment that encourages both collaboration and individual contributions, I'm going to tell you, friend, organizations can reap massive benefits of creative thinking and promoting team cohesion. Having diversity in the work environment, having an idea to where things come together from other people, is crucial. I love, I absolutely love having different people in the room who have completely different ideas and, and bring all those ideas together under one creative umbrella because innovation need not be a term that is scary or a term that is going to make us think, oh my goodness, this is way too much to even to, 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 to absorb and to grasp. Don't be discouraged. Innovation means just means ideas. And we need to be innovative. We need to be creative to progress. We must have new ways to come up with new ideas. And this is an environment, okay, that we must do, we must emphasize to have positivity. The very first way that we have positivity, by the way, as leaders, and the very foundational way is communication. Clear, not only just communication. Are we clear in our communication? Are we open? Are we transparent? Are our communication channels created so that we, we ensure that people understand the expectations, the goals, feedback? Is it clearly conveyed to the team members? You know, this is going to help uh, people feel valued, people feel engaged. I just had a conversation with a team member, and we were talking about uh, this is a newer team member. We were talking about how we do evaluations. We do real time. I don't want to wait three months, six months, 12 months to give you feedback on best practices, give you feedback on what the required um, standard operating procedures are beyond uh, a, a, a pamphlet or a booklet. I want to convey immediately when I see something that perhaps you can be moving better in, I, I am huge on responsiveness with our clients and not only that, our team members. So as responsive as you possibly can be, emails respond as quickly as you possibly can. Now, I try to respond to all emails the same day unless it's later in the day, then it's, then it's the next day unless, of course, I'm, I'm traveling and I've got a, a reminder on that or I've got a, a notation for people to what to expect. Responsiveness is key. So if I have someone who is slow to respond, I'll message them and explain, hey, responsiveness, quick responsiveness as quickly as possible, and make that a priority because it's, it's, a, it's a hallmark of our care for our clients. And this is, this is why it's so important for you to have your core values dialed in as, a, as an organization. Again, whether it's a company or whether it's a family or whether it's a community environment, I encourage you. Get a set of core values dialed in for your family. Get it dialed in for your business. Get it dialed in for any type of community environments that you have. Because those core values decide what is acceptable, what is unacceptable, what's prohibited, what's permitted in an organization. So our one of our core values is my first care core value is to care extraordinarily. And so how can I possibly show caring unless I am responsive. Because if I'm unresponsive, it really is saying, look, you're not a priority. I don't care. So, so by establishing these values, I can easily communicate that core value openly and transparently and say, hey, this is, this is a non-negotiable. This is an essential aspect of how we create an experience that meets our mission. 
And if you don't know what your mission is, again, go back. You have to have a clear sense of mission, whether it's a statement, whether it's a group of statements for us at our accounting and advisory firm. Our mission is to satisfy your tax accounting and advisory needs so outstandingly that your joy becomes infectious. Not many people put the words joy and taxes in the same sentence. Very few. It's not necessarily the tax work that bring people joy. It's the relationship. It's knowing that I have a trusted partner in this journey, my guide. And so communicating that is, a, is essential to, to creating this environment where we are creating and uh, fostering positivity. And then from there, we want to encourage, encourage collaboration, encourage teamwork, foster a collaborative culture where, where your people can rely on each other's strengths, can share ideas, work together toward what? Shared goals. Listen, friend, you have to have the shared goals. You have to have the sense of cohesion. You have to know where you're going and you have to believe in it. To believe in something is to be living it. This promotes a sense of unity, a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning. This is, this is non-negotiable in an organization. I'm constantly going around sharing the ideas like a butterfly, uh, just, just sharing, sharing the goals that we, that we have together, explaining, hey, the collaboration piece. This is a person you should contact about this. You should consider reaching out to this person on the team about this. Again, if you don't have a large team, that's okay. It could be simply sharing with that one member of your team. If it's in a family, share, 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 encourage collaboration and teamwork. And then the third part about this is to have a supporting flexible schedules. If you have remote work options, wellness programs, creating a, a cohesion of, of health in your organization to create that positive environment when employees feel their personal lives are respected. They're more likely to be motivated. They're more likely to be productive at work. So sometimes I've told my people, hey, close it down. You've been working late. Take an evening off. It's going to be okay. Take a little break. Take a vacation. If it's in the middle of the day, let me just stop them sometimes and say, hey, here's a bite to eat. Respect them. When they need to stay at home or work from a different location, I found that I want to give them flexibility. If someone, if there's a game or if there's something that's going on with one of their children, this is important. As long as the work gets done and gets done well, have flexibility. That's important in this entire genre of motivating people. I'm telling you guys, this works. And I want to make sure that we understand the value and the importance of progress. Progress is the antidote to burning out. It is the antidote to misery. It is the antidote to disengagement. We have to offer growth and development opportunities for our people. Make sure that this is integrated into your your, your model of business. Again, whether it's business at home or business at the office. Now you might say, Nate, investing in training, investing in development programs, it's not going to guarantee improved performance. It's not going to provide immediate return on investment. What if I do all of this training, all of this continued education, and my person leaves? And of course, what is the right response? What if I don't and people stay? You know, there's going to be costs associated with training and development initiatives. I'm not going to call those costs. I'm going to call it an investment. It is an investment in training and development because the long-term benefit outweighs the initial investment. In, in fact, research is clear on this. Uh, Academy of Management Journal said this, providing growth opportunities leads to increased job satisfaction, increased commitment from employees, and a Stanford study found that organizations that provide employees learning develop, and development outperform their competitors in terms of innovation and overall business success. It works. It works. I absolutely love 
training and education. Every, every little bit I can do, like, hey, what can we do to help you to be better at what you do? So providing those training programs, providing opportunities for people to enhance their skills through workshops, through courses, through conferences, whatever it looks like, and having that as part of their day. I want my team members to spend a minimum of 10% of their time in growth and learning. 20 is great. Involve them in mentorship programs. Pair employees with experienced mentors who can provide guidance and support their career progression. It doesn't even have to be within the organization. We can provide and prepare them with mentors outside of the organization. That works too. And then I love giving them stretch assignments. I love assigning challenging tasks or projects to employees that push their boundaries, help them develop new skills and accomplish. I just had one of my team members finish a very difficult set of tasks and deadline and working very hard and diligently after, after uh, more than, above, the, above the requirement. And it was a stretch assignment. And after it was all completed, I sent a text message. I told him they did a fantastic job. Great work on that assignment. And uh, just from the heart, I'm telling you, it works. It worked for me at Chuck E. Cheese's. When I was, when I was in that kitchen, I wanted to get a new assignment. I was then assigned after I, I mastered the kitchen work. In, in the, in the uh, dishwasher area, I then was able to then sweep the floors and do all of the, the table cleaning and the busing. You say, Nate, able to? Well, that's a menial job. No, 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 no. You don't understand. My floors were going to be spotless. My floors were going to have no dirt on them. I was scanning like a sentinel looking for any type of dirt. All the tables were going to be clean and, and the smell would be just so refreshing because I was going to use the cleaning solution to make it all perfect where people walked around and they felt clean. Then I got promoted again and I got promoted to then making pizzas. Hello. So then I wanted my pizzas to taste perfect. Of course, there was a recipe. Now I can say this now. It's been, what, I was 16 so uh, 34 years ago, I guess I can say this, I, I put a little Nate spice in it and I made the pizzas just a little bit different than the recipe and everyone loved them. In fact, the managers were asked me to make my special pizza just for them. And then I got promoted again to the area of the uh, uh, watching the, uh, the front area and doing the cash register work and doing the gifts and the toys to the kids. I desired to continue to grow and I excelled because of that. You have that opportunity as an employer to provide all of these environmental rewards, positive work environment, growth opportunities as effective strategies. And I have to just tell you, not just from the academic side of it, but also a practitioner, a leader just like you, that the results are outstanding. People desire to be in those environments. These are just a few, by the way, ways we can motivate. There's so many others. We'll talk about them on, on subsequent episodes. Take these to heart. In your daily practice of business, of leadership, and watch as people begin to flourish. Watch as they begin to embrace a better future state that you help them to create. 